To get started, I will be using two pounds of ground beef. This is a 93 lean meat to 7% fat ratio. I don't suggest you use anything lower than 85-15 ratio. If you get into the 80-20, you'll have a lot of fat and lose a lot of the volume of your meatloaf. So next, I'm going to be using a mix of season all salt, garlic powder, and onion powder. This is one teaspoon of Lowry seasoning, a half teaspoon of garlic powder, and a half teaspoon of onion powder. You could also just use one teaspoon of salt in place of the season all salt if you don't have Lowry's. I'm also going to be using a quarter cup of ketchup. By the way, I will be putting the ingredients and measurements in the description below this video. So if you're curious to know the exact measurements, again, you can always look in the description below my videos to get additional information. Next, I will be adding one and a half teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. Now the next ingredient I did not measure. I basically used one small onion that I had and I sauteed it. And pretty much what I did again is I took one small onion, diced it into a small dice, and I sauteed it in a preheated pan with some olive oil. I also added some salt and I basically sauteed it and cooked it until the onion was soft and translucent. So if you want a specific ratio of onion, sorry, I don't have it for you. I normally eyeball that. So if you have a medium sized onion, maybe use half of it or a large onion, use a quarter of it. But this was a very small yellow onion that I had that I just sauteed. So I did that first so I would allow it to cool before adding it to my meat. So this is one small sauteed onion going in. Now I'm going to add a half cup of plain breadcrumbs. If you have breadcrumbs and they are seasoned or Italian style breadcrumbs, use those. That works just fine. I happen to have plain breadcrumbs. And the last ingredient is one room temperature large egg. I'm just going to crack that right into the bowl, scramble it a bit, and then with my clean hands, I'm going to start mixing and mashing my meatloaf. Now, I know one general rule of thumb for making meatloaf is not to overwork your meat because then it'll become tough and it won't be tender. I'm going to be honest, guys. I just basically mix and mash it until it's all combined well. I try not to go crazy and mush it and overwork it and I kind of fold things in. So that's the best tip I can give you. But if you do happen to overwork your meat, it's meatloaf. So if you know you're meant to slice it like you're slicing a loaf of bread it's meant to be a loaf so don't stress out about it cover it in gravy serve some mashed potatoes you're good to go so here i'm using a one and a half quart casserole dish this is an oven proof oven safe casserole dish and i'm just going to place my meat mixture into this dish and shape it and pat it together until it forms like this oblong shape you can definitely use a bread loaf pan. I don't have one at the moment, but definitely use a bread loaf pan. I'm not sure what size, but a classic meatloaf, it's supposed to be shaped like a loaf. So I am using what I have and I'm again, just shaping it into this casserole dish. Now, another characteristic of a classic meatloaf is to add extra ketchup on top with some dried parsley. I don't actually like that, so I opt to keep it off. But if you want that ketchup, go right ahead. I will be baking this in a preheated oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 50 to 55 minutes or until the internal temperature reaches 160 degrees Fahrenheit. It has been a little over 50 minutes and my meatloaf is done. And I'm also going to be serving this with some creamy mashed potatoes and a brown gravy that I'm making. Look for that video link in the description below and at the end of this video. Now. This is important. You want to allow your meatloaf to rest. I will be covering this with aluminum foil and allow the meatloaf to rest for 15 to 20 minutes. Actually, I, I like to go 20 minutes, but if you're in a rush, at least 15. 
Okay, so it has been a little over 20 minutes and my meatloaf is ready to be served. Again, because you allowed it to rest when you slice into it, none of that delicious juice and some of the fat that keeps the meat tender and moist will run out. It'll absorb right back into your meatloaf. So now all I'm going to do is cut into this and show you what it looks like and serve a plate. I truly enjoy Sunday suppers and when I make comfort food just like this for my husband and my kids it really pleases me when they enjoy my cooking so as you can see the meatloaf is very moist and tender I don't have clear juices running all over the place which means that it absorbed right back into this meatloaf so now I'm going to serve this with a heaping spoonful of mashed potatoes brown gravy and some peas and Sunday supper is ready Hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it and thanks for watching.